<laughs> Welcome to the Game Reserve. Um, just to introduce ourselves quickly, my name is Ray. I'm the creche manager and also the herpetologist on the reserve. For most of you wondering what a herpetologist is, it's just somebody that is in the conservation industry that specializes working with reptiles and also amphibians. Unfortunately, our reptile collection doesn't host or doesn't house any amphibians, but that's the field in which I specialize. All right. I will have two colleagues which will be assisting me during the shows today. One is John. John is our animal trainer. You'll see him running Eddie afterwards. Um, he was with the Tigers. We work very closely together. Not that close, but uh, we work very closely in the sense that if something were to go wrong whilst handling these animals, there is somebody there as backup. All right. To restrain the animal, to do first aid, and to get the person to hospital as soon as possible. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't stock any antivenom on the reserve. Okay. Because 80% of people are actually allergic to the antivenom. Okay, that's why most hospitals don't stock it and uh, people in the past that used to stock antivenom used to inject themselves with the antivenom and without realizing they're allergic to it and will die as a result of allergic reaction and anaphylaxis. Alright, Corny behind me, he's the brave soul. Okay, um, have your cameras ready because today might be today. <laughs> Alright, um, Corny, basically when I'm in the crash, which is most of the times raising of cubs and babies, that's why I'm covered in feces and milk, etc. That's why it looks so dirty, um, which is most of the time. So Corny's basically running the snake park. That's his side. Record keeping, handling, uh, feeding, <coughs> medication. We medicate our animals, okay, believe it or not. If the vet knows we're coming with a black mamba, you'd be exiting the, the out the back door already, okay? <laughs> so we do medicate our animals ourselves, all right? So he's the brave one, he should be doing all the handling of the snakes. Um, I think we'll bring one snake to the front here, okay? He can see you scared of snakes. All right, so Corny, unfortunately we won't have a snake at the bottom for you guys to hold after the show. We have recently fed them, all right, because of all the public holidays and etc., Christmas, New Year, etc. Unfortunately, we have to keep some snakes uh, uh, separate so that people can handle, but uh, we've extended it, they had it too long, so we fed the animals. So with handling, the animal will regurgitate the food. We don't want that to happen, all right, but if you have any questions, we will be around for you guys to answer any questions, all right. Okay, so let's just see quickly who's scared of snakes. Don't lie to me, because I'm going to find out very quickly if you are. <laughs> Nobody is scared of snakes. <laughs> Bring us that snake, Kuni. Let's just start looking in the crowd here. Okay. All right. Now, I'm only joking. We're not going to throw any snakes in the crowd. When we did that in the past, we got into a lot of trouble. Okay, jobs are scarce these days. All right. Why are you scared of snakes? Because. Like what? They sting you. <laughs> okay. I know they can bite you, but they're about sting. Yeah. Okay. All right. They can sting you. You mean they can bite you. They're venomous. Okay. Besides that. It's a snake. They can string it's, it's, snake. The devil. No, it's, it's the devil. <laughs> Sir, can I, can I just rectify something quickly? If you read your Bible correctly, eh, it's Eve. Who gave Adam the apple to eat? So that's why we're not the problem of Eden. <laughs> Snakes are not evil. You must look at that one a bit closer. All right. All right. That's why I'm also not married. You see. All right. Um, snakes are not evil, they're not aggressive, they don't chase you for no reason, they don't hunt in packs. If you kill a snake, his relatives aren't going to seek revenge. And when I say seek revenge, they're not going to come 12 o'clock at night, climb, climb under your duvet and bite you on your big toe. All right. And if you sever the head from the body, it's not going to regenerate one. In the snake's case, it would either be a head or a body. Okay. People develop a fear from snakes is because they watch all the movies that are coming out these days. Okay, absolute nonsense, hogwash. You've all seen it. You've seen snakes on a plane. You've seen that. Snakes on a train. Uh, vipers. Um, anaconda. Who's seen that one? Who's seen the first one? Change up. Second one. Third one. Third one. Anybody seen it? No one's seen the third one. Okay, don't waste your money. Absolute nonsense. Remember, it's been a couple of years since David Hasselhoff has played in Baywatch. All right? He's overweight. His belly sticking out. And the snake doesn't even look like a snake. Okay, so everybody develops a fear from watching these types of movies. That's where you develop the fear. And remember, snakes are very important to us because removing that species out of the, the environment, you will cause a rift. You affect the food chain, the food web, etc. And snakes are very important to us because most medicines are derived from snake venom. Believe it or not, it's using medication, for example, for heart disease, leukemia, cancer, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, painkillers, etc. And the list goes on and on and on. Okay. Snakes don't bite you for no reason. They only bite you when you look for trouble. Okay. 
Remember the, the late Steve Irwin? Can you all remember him? Okay. Look where that got him. Okay. If you fiddle around with these animals, you provoke them, you corner them into an area. The only means of defense, remember, for that animal to escape is to defend himself. People always get bit in the low extremities, either in the hands. I've got no sympathy for you. Why are you fiddling around with a venomous snake? Feet is accidental. You stood on the snake. Okay. Remember, they're not out there to try and harm you. Okay. All right. Inside the pit, we have all indigenous species, some endemic to certain parts of Africa, such as the green mamba, which isn't found in this region. Um, remember, you can't see a lot of the snakes inside here because these animals are designed to stay well hidden. They rely on camouflage, their color, their markings to keep themselves well hidden, well hidden from natural predation, okay, other animals that feed up snakes, and also to ambush their prey. So they need to blend in very, very well. Okay, so you might not think there's not a lot of snakes inside here, but I guarantee you there's quite a few. Okay, we're just going to start off by taking out one, um, which I'm sure you all have walked past. Uh, okay, you can find it. All right, this snake is found all along uh, KwaZulu Natal, Durban, all the way up into Mozambique. Okay, you all know the green mamba. Okay, relative of the black mamba. All right. Same genus, different species. Now, mambas and cobras share one thing in common. They've got the same type of venom. They have what we call a neurotoxic venom. Their venom destroys the blood, uh, the, the nervous system. Venomous snakes don't all share the same type of venom. Venom affects different parts of the body, etc. Can you find him? Am I making a call today? Okay. The green mamba is the lesser aggressive species than the black. Black mambas can reach four, over four meters in length. These guys, two, two and a half meters. They're also boreal, which means you're less than likely to encounter them because most people encounter cobras, adders, that's are terrestrial, which you'll find on the ground. Whereas these guys, you'll find up in the treetop. Their venom is very fast acting, okay? Basically what their venom does, it causes a blockage between the nerve endings and the skeletal muscle, all right? So it misfires and that results in paralysis. So what's gonna happen within the first, Five to fifteen minutes of being bitten. Okay, don't bring it too close, yeah. I'll see you on holiday in Deb. All right. What happens is it causes paralysis. So you're going to have uh, trouble with speech, uh, slurred, uh, you're slurring, uh, ptosis, uncontrolled movement of the eyelids. You know when your when your eyelids starts opening, closing. Sort of if you've been intoxicated by alcohol. Okay, <coughs> if you drank too much. Not that I've ever been there. All right. Um, nausea, convulsions, profit sweating, and eventually respiratory failure. It does affect the respiratory system very, very quickly. That is why they put you on an artificial respirator very, very quickly. Okay. Nobody can give you a time for any snake bite, irrespective of the type of venom. There are a number of things one needs to take into consideration. One, the amount of venom that is injected, okay? Which you're not going to know because snakes control the amount that they inject. Secondly, is the locality of the bite. How close to an organ is it, okay? Third, is it arterial? Is it traveling through the lymphatic tissue? And fourth, is the condition of the patient. Okay. Um, also remember, um, an adult stands a better chance of survival than a small child. Okay, remember, adults also, when they eat a lot of food, especially McDonald's, KFC, Nando's, um, when you eat those sort of food quite regularly, you get nice and fat. That's an ugly word to use. Let's rather say obese. That's the word they use. Okay. So all that fat forms a protective layer around all your major organs. Okay. So it takes a longer time for the venom to actually penetrate through them. Okay. Where somebody that is athletic, that runs a lot, cycles, um, does everything. Okay. That's very lean. Um, Hardly any fat, unfortunately, is going to go down very fast. Okay, but that doesn't mean you guys must now go out and eat a lot of fast food. All right. That is the green mamba. In Africa, there is four mambas. All right. Um, the green and the black is found in the southern region. Okay. We won't go to the other two. All right. The neurotoxin. Cobras and mambas have that type of venom. You can see the mamba has a coffin shaped head. All right. You'll see that the head shapes are very different. Um, Obviously, the shape of a coffin, which is an indication to you what will happen if you go fiddle with it. Okay. Can you see that when Corny took the snake back, he went in an opposite direction? Not like you see in the movies, the snake is going to attack him, attack him, or give off pheromones to notify all the snakes in the area to come and attack him. All right. Absolute nonsense. The snakes will leave you alone if you leave them alone. All right. That's how it goes. Remember also, snakes keep your population of rodents down, your vermin population, rats, mice, which in turn prevents diseases getting carried over to other species. 
for every snake that you kill in your house, you're getting bite 30,000 mice because that's how much mice one snake can consume throughout its lifetime. Okay? <laughs> so please think twice before you kill the first snake. Alright? Okay. The, the green mamba it has yellow on the back of its head. Is that very observant? Yes. That's actually a burn mark. When he was inside the enclosure, he burnt under the light. Okay? Oh, Remember, snakes are the only species that are unable to actually learn, they don't have a cerebral cortex. Okay, so they don't learn, so you'll burn yourself multiple times underneath the line. So that's just scarring from the actual animal. So after a couple of sheddings, he's just remained with that color. But they're completely green. Okay. All right. Me. No, I'm joking. No, um, I'm only kidding. I've just worked many years with him, so I let the youngsters work with him. The only problem is he's still a little bit scared of the black mamba so all the stories that people tell him that's why he's scared of it okay but we'll get to that now, now. all right um this is the boom slung the boom slung ranks the top in the top six the six most venomous snake in the world drop for drop for a land ma uh, land snake um the toxin is probably the uh, their venom is probably the most toxic drop for drop okay but the upside to this is a very slow acting venom whereas the neurotoxin from the mambas and cobras is very fast because it attacks the nervous system their venom destroys the blood. Basically what happens, it lowers the platelets in the blood, okay? Preventing coagulation, in other words, it thins the blood out. And that causes massive internal hemorrhage. So after a couple of hours of being bitten by the snake, blood will come out of your nose, your mouth, your ears, old things that have in your property. You'll find brown purple blots just appearing around the surface of your skin, particularly around the kidney area, as an indication as the blood is going out to the surface, okay? It's a very nasty bite. This is a very dangerous snake. But as I said, um, Remember, people very rarely encounter them because they're a boreal species. You find them up in the trees. Okay. Um, this whole species also will avoid conflict, will avoid a confrontation. <coughs> very rarely do you get bitten by them. The people that get bitten by them are people that work with them regularly. The scientists that do research, readers that read them, people that work in parks, do educational talks such as Cornelius. If you were to get bitten, but luckily the snakes don't bite him. Okay. He's of the pheromone that uh, repels them. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, Wormsung also a back fang, and that's one of the biggest reasons why people actually take chances with him, because when they say back fang, they think, oh, well, it has to get me on a finger or on the hand, somewhere really far back. Their fang structure is different to all, most other snakes in the sense that it doesn't have a hollow or a duct where venom gets forced through. Okay, they've got solid fangs with deep, deep grooves along the edges of it. So for envenomation to take place or be transferred, they actually have to chew on the prey. The minute they chew, they puncture one of the glands at the roof of the mouth and the venom trickles and runs down the grooves into the prey. Okay. But as I said, they're not aggressive species. They take X amount of venom to kill X amount of, of mice. Okay. I'm just going to wait for Corny to come to the front here quickly. <laughs> Alright, some snakes have a very smooth scale. Alright. So as the sun, sorry, the sunlight reflects off of the scales, it's very shiny. And that gives you the appearance that the snake is actually wet. Some snakes like this have a very rough or peel scale and sort of has that matte look. That's why it's so difficult to see them when they're actually lying on the ground. Can you hear the puff at it? Can you hear him? Watch how fast he moves. This is Africa's fastest striking snake. And look how well he blends, blends into the natural environment. Just sit down in front there, buddy. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, let's sit. Can you see that? Fast, eh? Wow. Check that. See that? Can you see that shape? That is formed behind the head. He forms like a loop, basically forming a coil, okay, or spring loading itself. So he can hit the target from a third of the body then, okay. They can move very quickly, they move like lightning. There we go. You see that? Some venom on the All right, All right, you see the triangular shape here. You can see the chevron all the way down the dorsal side of the body, okay. Um, they blend very well into the environment. Most people, the puffhead will give you warning, you'll hiss, you'll puff, you'll make a lot of noise. But most people tread on him and stand on him and they wonder why the snake hasn't given any warning. It's very simple, because they are ambush hunters. Remember, it's their job to blend in. Okay, so he doesn't want to make any noise, um, hiss and puff, etc. Because if he makes too much noise, that would mean you'd be aware that he's in the vicinity. There'll be a confrontation between yourself and the snake. And that is what he's trying to avoid. Okay. Venom is very important for them, okay? They don't go wasting it unnecessarily, biting every single animal that comes in its path, okay? Because when the time comes that it needs it, it's gonna have nothing, all right? So that's why they lie there motionless. He's expecting you to move over him, around him, whatever the case may be, but don't stand directly on top of him, okay? 
because then he's going to be a little bit cross with you. All right. Mm -hmm. It's very rare for both fangs to penetrate. Most people that get bitten is only when one fang penetrates. They don't strike sideways. They don't strike backwards. People believe that they do that. It's only when they reposition or realign themselves so that they can lunge forward. Okay. All right. With these guys, um, their venom is also different. Okay. This snake gives you the most painful bite of any South African snake. Okay. They have what we call a cytotoxic venom. Their venom destroys blood vessels to 